The next thing I want to spend a little bit of time talking about is campaigns and voting because we are in a, in a high voting and campaign season right now. As I stated, we are in a presidential election. Um, there are state elections going on. There are state representatives that are happening. And so if we had been in a regular class, you would have heard me talk about voting every single day because I am a big, big, big uh, cheerleader for voting. Voting, I think, is the way we let our voices be heard. And so many times we allow our voices to be silenced uh, because we don't show up to vote. And not showing up to vote in this year's election is not an option because there are so many things on the line, not just the president, but as we have found over the last six years or so, the Senate has a lot of power. And that power needs to be dismantled and redistributed. And the only way that happens is if it's no longer have the majority of a Mitch McConnell as the speak, uh, as the majority leader of the Senate. And so that means there has to be some some seats uh, taken from the Republican side and maybe put on the Democratic side or independent side. But it cannot stay Republican because the very nature of who we are as a country is under attack. And it is under attack because Republicans in our uh, Senate are not doing their job. They're not upholding their oath to the Constitution at this point. And so we have to make some changes. And so there's two things I say. We register to vote, but then we also show up to vote. There was over 100 million people that did not vote in the last presidential election. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by 3 million plus votes. And so technically, you know, she did receive more votes than Donald Trump. However, the votes that counted, those in the electoral college, people didn't show up in those areas. And so if we want to see a change in our democracy, we want to see a change in our political system, then we the people have to use the one thing that we all have, and that's the power to vote. So I encourage you, you are still teenagers and in high school, so you may not be quite eligible, but make sure the people in your family that are eligible to vote register and then they show up to vote in November. And so right now we're going to have an early voting period for our Senate race that is between two of our Democrats that are running to unseat John Cornyn, who is a Republican on the Senate side. So we have a runoff right now between Royce West and MJ Hager. Royce West is an African-American male. MJ Hager is a white female. And they are uh, in a runoff on the Democratic side. And early voting starts on Monday, uh, June 29th, and goes through July 6th. And then voting takes place on Tuesday, July 7th. So the deal is, is that Whoever wins out of the runoff will become the opponent against John Cornyn. So it's just not important to register. We have to actually show up to vote. And what I always encourage my students and clients and people that I work with, it is not that you will find someone that you are 100% in support of. It's just not going to happen. But what you do need to do and what I'm encouraging you to do with your families is what are the top 10 things you are most concerned about as a citizen? Is it health care? Is it immigration? Is it education? Is it the cost of education? Is it clean water? Is it our environment? What are the top things that are concerning to you as a citizen, to your family? And then you find a candidate that speaks to the things that speaks to you. And once you do that, then you can decide, okay, I can support this candidate or I can support another candidate. But not having one at all is not an option because you're not going to find one that agrees with you 100%. So you have to weigh out your options. What are your top five? You have your top 10. Then what are your top five? What are your non-negotiables? For me, my non-negotiables, you cannot want to dismantle Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act, period. That's a non-starter for me. You can improve upon it, you can add to it, but you cannot take away, period. Education, I'm raising a young child in America, my husband and I, a young, and so we're concerned about education and making sure that it will be affordable for him when he graduates in the next four years. We're concerned about the cost of medications. We both have elderly parents. So the, uh, the cost of living increase that they give to them on their Medicare is often ate up by the increase in medications. So that's another part of healthcare. I'm concerned about um, police uh, brutality. I'm concerned about our criminal justice system and making sure that we have people sitting uh, not only on the on the judicial bench, but those elected officials, the the district attorneys, the prosecutors. 
the police chiefs, the sheriffs, all those are elected positions. And so we've got to do a much better job at knowing who those people are as well when it's time to vote so we can make sure we have people that are that are progressive in their thinking about how we manage all that's going on in the world today. So voting is very important. The changes that have been made for us socially, for people of color, for women, has all come at the ballot box, has all come because of what was taken to the Supreme Court. Our right to vote was at the Supreme Court. Civil rights was at the Supreme Court. Fair education was at the Supreme Court. Separate but equal was struck down at the Supreme Court. The women's right to vote was at the Supreme Court. And so that only happened because people showed up and people marched back then, people protested back then, um, and so what we're doing now is nothing new, but we have to be strategic about what we're doing. The end result then was equal rights. And all we're asking for now in our protests and in our marching is for those people that have broken the law, that have killed unarmed black men and women and children, um, or killed anybody unarmed that is a police officer, that they are held to the same standard as everyone else. And that is why you hear the cries in the street. But it's if we don't uh, organize ourselves to vote and put people in position that understand why this is so important, we will continue to be marching and protesting, but we won't be at the table to make the right decisions. And the only way you can create change is someone has to be in the room. So you need those people on the street but you also need the people in the room that's going to be making the decisions. Voting is very important.